Oh. Hello, Alex Paula. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome back. <laughs> welcome to Paso del Camino. Welcome back on the Camino, right? Yeah. Welcome to Paso del Camino, a uh, project about the Camino Santiago to the Camino Santiago. It's a, such a pleasure for me to have you here talking to me. Uh, thank you so much for, for doing the, for, for doing this for doing this with me. And I I really hope that you enjoy it. Uh, our talk this uh, afternoon for me and morning for you. <laughs> well, I appreciate the invite. It's always good to hear from fellow Pellegrinos from the Camino. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about this. So let's start from the beginning, right? Uh, how you found about it, the Camino? So the first time I ever heard about it was um, on this show here in America called Larry King Live. Yeah. And I was 19 years old. It was like my sophomore year in college. And um, it, I think he was interviewing Shirley MacLaine, who's a famous actress. And she had written a book about her experience on the Camino. So it just seemed, I don't know why, but it just like really spoke to me, even at, at that early age. And uh, that, I remember thinking to myself, wow, that's something I would really, really like to do. And uh, I don't know when it'll happen, but I know I will do it. And uh, I, I did some, you know, research on it, very brief, but it was enough. It was just like love at first sight. And I was like, okay, I'm doing that. Uh, so that was the very first uh, time I ever heard of it. You know, that's it's kind of weird, but in a good way. You know, uh, I'm volunteer. I I, I I am a spigalero at San Alberg on, on the Portuguese Camino. Okay. And, and sometimes I like to ask people why are they, they are doing Walk of the Camino. And even uh, one of my stories with the Camino, um, I was before I started my first Camino in 2016. Um, um, and it actually it was on bike, but um, from my hometown Braga to Santiago and then came back more or less 400 kilometers. Um, and but two weeks before before I, I start uh, my, my Camino, my first Camino, I I got out of my I I was I how can I say if I forgot the word I got out of my job voluntarily. Uh, so I, I quit my job. You quit, okay. I quit my job and I was working as, as a sales guy in a, in, a very, in a very important small town here in Portugal where, where the Portuguese Camino passes through. It's called okay. Nacelos. And then it was in October. Um, and here um, on the Portuguese Camino, the most months are April with more pilgrims, April, May, September, October. Um, and then uh, two weeks before I started, I quit my job and I decided to talk to pilgrims and asking, asking them why they are walking the Camino. And uh, in that, in that my experiences, and then the experiences being the Alberta, I don't know, but when maybe 17% of, of the American pilgrims that I met, uh, mostly not decided to walk the Camino, but known about the Camino because of the movie, The Way. Oh, well, that's interesting. The Way, another connection, The Way was actually filmed the year that I did the Camino in oh, 2010. That's amazing, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know, I think they did it a couple months after I was there from um, end of early May through early June. Um, of 2010, it happened to be a holy year, uh, which means for those who don't know, the holy year is when um, St. James's uh, birthday falls on a Sunday. And that happens maybe every seven, 10 years. It's not, you know, perfectly predictable. Well, it is predictable, but it's not consistent in, um, you know, in, 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 in the space between the years and, and its consistency. Last but um, one, Last one before. 2004, last one before 1999, last one before okay. 1993, next one from now, today, this is all year, so next one, 2027. Okay, so there you have intervals of, I yeah. don't know, four to ten, seven years yeah. you know, in between. Um, so anyway, so The Way, which is the film you're, you're, you're discussing, that, um, that was filmed the year that I did it and shortly after I, I completed it. 
So, but I, I did not go because of the film. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm one yeah. exception. Uh, people walk walk the the. the... People just walk the Camino for various different reasons. Uh, right. And uh, for me, it was more like uh, asking for open my horizons and uh, trying to change a bit my life. Uh, mm -hmm. What was yours? What was your motivation to start walking the, the, the Camino? Uh, well, like I said, it was something always on the back of my mind. I always wanted to do it. But as you know, to do the Camino, you know, you it, it takes a lot of preparation in terms of commitment and uh you know time uh organization time management and um i knew i didn't want to just do it like in 10 days or a week i wanted to do it like the i don't want to no okay i wanted to do it my way yeah. and my way happened to be uh the camino francis which you know starts on the border of uh, france and with um, Spain. So I started at Saint Jean Pierre de Pau, and then I went all the way, all the way to not only um, Santiago de Compostela, mm -hmm. but I did the extra three day track to Finisterre. Um, so why did I do it? Um, I did it, I had just turned 30. And uh, I, I, at that, that time in my life, I was working 100 hours a week. I've been I've been working that much for about five years. Uh, I had several, a couple of uh, family businesses um, here in the area with my mother and brother, and um, it just it was a very unhealthy lifestyle. I had a zero personal life, and uh, it got to a point where I, you know, I, I just needed a break. I needed to walk away from everything to reassess my life and what I wanted to to do with it. So. Um, and it just it just happened at the right time. Like I, I feel like I did the Camino exactly at the time when I needed it most. So that's the reason why I did it. You know, mo mostly, mostly, of, but th that is common mainly in American pilgrims. Okay, because you are far, it, it, far from from Europe. But do uh, you know? I usually on on the end of of these videos, I. I ask them what, and I will I will ask you something different. But usually I ask them, uh, which advice can you give, or what can you say to a people to a person that never walked the Camino? And they just most of them they suddenly uh, wait for your call and go. Oh wow! Wait for your call and go. Yeah, that's interesting. That's fascinating. Yeah, that I can definitely relate to that. I definitely, um, yeah, that was my call. And that call was like, it came from within. It's not like I saw something that triggered that interest or um, reminded me of the Camino. I just instinctively knew. I was like, this is the time for me to do the Camino. Do you know, yesterday, yesterday, and it, it's not, the, it was not the only one. Some, some other, other pilgrims have, have told me the same or, or something similar, but mm, some pilgrims they, they, they just tell me, I know about the Camino, I dreamed about the Camino, and that's why I did the Camino because I had a dream about it. Oh, okay. You know, and yeah. it was it was a guy, a guy from a young guy like like us from uh, Austin, Texas. Okay. Uh, and that <laughs> that is just amazing. But it, it was it, it was not not the first one to tell me that there was some more person from Spain. That they all are added from Brazil. A lot of, lots of students from Brazil uh, told me the same. It's interesting. It's just, it's just amazing. For me, I five years ago I already know something about the Camino, but I, I, in my life I never think to, to walk it or to bicycle for the first time. But just just working there, seeing that that uh, that pilgrims passing by with their happiness you know and just and when when i start to talk to them it was i feel special to to hear about their stories i remember when one of the, the girls had like this the most amazing story ever it was a girl from german i don't i i don't recall the name but uh, she told me i decided to walk the the, the first camino it was the french camino it was like i guess it was 2014 and 14 
um, and uh, she told me, I went with my with my with my with my dad to to repair our relationship. We decided ah. to walk the Camino to repair our relationship. So uh, they have done the Camino. The, the, after the Camino, the, the relationship was uh, way better, much better. And but one month later, she had a very very hard car accident. Uh, she, uh, she, uh, I remember she told me that yeah, she was dead for like a minute or so. Uh, Wait, I'm sorry. The accident was before the Camino or after, after one month, one month after, oh, okay. one month okay. after the Camino, and she was dead for a minute, but then it came to life again. And uh, she told me that she wanted to do the Camino Portuguese to, to, to say thank you, for for oh. being alive. For okay. Being alive. Wow. So, our question. Um, yeah. If you could go back uh, and turn back time and relive your best moments at the Camino, which moment you chose? I know exactly which moment. And uh, it, it was just so, I, I think the reason I remember and the reason it's so remarkable, it's because it was so simple and, and something that I can put into practice every day of my life. It was just, um, I was having lunch, this wonderful lunch uh, in Finisterre. So it was like practically my last day. Yeah. And I was just sitting there, you know, with a, a view of the ocean and um, having wonderful seafood. I'm sure it was, I don't know, squid or, you know, ju just a, a seafood medley of some sort. And I was sitting there with a few people that I had met, you know, those past couple of days. But it felt as though, like, I was able to stop time <laughs> and then prolong that moment. And it's so bizarre, but I felt like I literally, like, I made a conscious decision, like, okay, I'm going to stop time. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to enjoy this moment. And I'm, you know, and it's going to last forever. It, I don't, I'm sure it was only like maybe two hours, but it felt like an eternity. And, um, and I feel like that's something, it, it, I think it's the pinnacle of, of the idea of, you know, living in the moment, embracing the moment, being mindful. So if I could go back to one moment, that would be it because that's something that I can do. And I, I do continually do, um, you know, every day of my life in certain instances where I just really try to appreciate the moment and just live it for what it is. That's so just, being in the moment. Carpe diem, just amazing. <laughs> so, uh, so simple, so yeah. simple, right? Anybody can do that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so how it was like walking the Camino in 2010, it, it wasn't, okay, it was only here, there, but, uh, it wasn't like this boom that we have now on the Camino. Um, for me, I, I, uh, in 2019, I, I walked the, the, the Camino Primitivo. It, compared to the French, the, the French Camino, it's nothing, but it's a Camino that uh, are right now are, are being very, very famous because it's amazing. It's wonderful. I cannot describe the sightseeing because it's just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. uh, the Camino is hard, lots of mountains. It's just amazing. And I decided to walk it, uh, and uh, this this the primitive Camino joins uh, with the, the French Camino on the, on the last fifty k. And okay, in that Camino, we we had a more or less sixty seventy pilgrims, and most of us we known all each other, you know. But then it was August, the first week of August, um, first or second week of August. And in the last, in that, when we enter that first town, Melide, on, on the French Camino, um, it was a, just a shock, a lot of, a lot of pilgrims, people from everywhere, I don't know, <laughs> they, they were came for, uh, it was just so crazy. Uh, mm. How it was like for you walking in that time with less pilgrims, where you can almost uh, know each other, um, 
And and you can share some some moments of, of that Camino with us, please. So you don't think that's the case anymore? You think today it's overcrowded? The French Camino? Yes, it is. It, really? It, it's a fact. It's a fact. Okay. Uh, other Caminos, other Caminos don't. Other Caminos don't. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Let me just. Uh, I don't know how exactly the numbers for the French Camino, but in 2016. Yeah, 2019. Um, in 2019, the the Portuguese Camino from all year, all year, there were 80,000 pilgrims on the Portuguese Camino. What? Okay. 80, what year? 2019. What year? Okay. In uh, on the, that one that I that I walked, the Primitivo were more or less like 15,000. All okay. year. In, two, in 2010, I was able to walk uh, an alternative to the French Camino. It's called uh, the, the Windsor Camino, Camino de Invierno. And it starts on Ponferrada. And uh, it's, it's, it's an alternative, it's a new one. A new one. It's official like five years ago or six. Um, and I decided to walk it. In, okay, it was in the middle of the virus, but in 10 days of walking, uh, we were free, free pilgrims. Hmm. On the French Camino, there, there's a lot, a lot of people. Mostly, okay, mostly on the last uh, 200, 300 kilometers. Of course, if you start in Saint John, like right. you, it would be not that crowded. Will be like the same, uh, a little bit more, but uh, but not. Yeah, not, yeah. Now that you mention it, I do remember that. Uh, it, it definitely got more crowded towards the end. I want to say like the last 100 kilometers, you know. Um, but I don't know. That didn't necessarily bother me. I just, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I was just so much in my, in my own element that um, I, I do remember saying this out loud to somebody <laughs> towards the end. You know, you always meet people on the Camino. <laughs> And then I had this little group that I, I had known since the very beginning. So basically like 30 days, yeah. you know, we would not that we were together every day, but you know how it happens. Yeah. Like you run into each other every couple of days or every week, you know, familiar faces. And I remember like turning to these people and I was like, you know, I'm just so over meeting new people. <laughs> like, like I'm good. I've met so many like wonderful people. I don't need to make new friendships. You know, that's maybe that sounds, you know, uh, off putting and uh, and a bit callous, but it was just like I knew it was a, towards the end. You know, I wasn't going to spend a lot of time with these people. Where was our friendship, our relationship going to go? Yeah. So, so it, I hadn't thought about that until you mentioned, you know, how, how uh, overcrowded it gets. And I think that's partially why, because there's just like so many people coming in and out and, um, you know, but that that didn't degrade my experience at all. Definitely, no, no, um, not not yeah. as mine, not as mine. And one of my best moments, it was on that Camino, on that time, in in that in that same town, Melida. Okay, you may you, you need to know that on the last mainly on summer, this is happens most on summer, because it's on the Euro European vacation time. Uh, it's on right. summer. Right. Uh, and some people don't, don't have just the time to, to walk it the whole the whole thing. Right. The, the exactly. Days. So some yeah. people have walked two weeks, some people just walk right. one week. And for you to get the the the, the, the pilgrim the, the compostella, you have to walk at least uh, one hundred kilometers. Right. So that's why from the last uh, the, the last hundred kilometers are more crowded. Right. So um, let's continue our amazing talk thank you so much so um our question another one yes um if you imagine that something magical in the world happens and you have to relive the same day every day you have to do all the same things every day and in that moment when this magical thing happens you are on the camino and you have to choose uh, and you have to walk one stage. Which stage you choose for walking every time, every day? 
so which stage of the Camino? Yeah. Would I? Oh man. <laughs> like I, a day, I, a day's worth of walking. Yeah. Uh, um. That's really difficult to answer because every day was so different. And um, maybe it's a function of the time of, you know, the, the season that I went. Yeah. Uh, because like I said, I went in May, June. So I got snow, I got rain. Uh, you know, I, I saw, <laughs> I experienced unbearable heat. Um, I, got, I got all of those extremes. And, uh, it, but with each one of those experiences, um, you know, it, it, it left a, a different impression. So, um, I, I, I don't think I could choose. I can't, I can't answer your question. I can't choose just one day. I can't, yeah. but if, but I need, I need to, I need to choose this stage. You can see on the picture. Uh, this is on the primitive. Okay, I, okay, I got one. When you go through Osebrero. Okay, yeah, yeah. Nice, 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 nice. It, if I had to choose, yeah, it would be that. No, let me. This, 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 this picture where you can see is a one stage of 40, 40 kilometers, and uh, fifteen of them, no, twenty of them, are on the the middle of this mountain. It's just mountains yeah. that's between the start of the stage and and the, the end, there's nothing over there, just mountains. Oh, okay. And it's just wow. breathtaking, breathtaking. Yeah. It's just, for me, it's just, yeah. uh, I don't know. I can I do it. Yeah. I can do it this every day. <laughs> yeah. It's just. Uh, that's great. Unbelievable. Look at this. Where, which one? Which Camino was that? It's the Primitivo. The Primitivo. Uh, Is that through Portugal? No, no, no. It's um, in Spain, not north of Spain. Okay. Uh, that starts in Oviedo, more or less okay. 220 oh, kilometers. Okay. 200, 200, 300, 320, more or okay. less. Got it. It's just unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah. So, Do you, uh, for from your Camino family, there uh, there were any any pilgrims that seek out to your mind? That seek out to me? Yeah, yeah. That stick out to you. Oh well, sure. All the ones that I I'm still in contact with ten years later. I That's think they're about they're about seven of us, and they're from all over. You know, Italy. Uh, you interviewed one of them, Ferenc from Hungary. Really? Yeah, that's how you found me through Ferenc. We did it together. It was our very so. Get this. It was that's his amazing. first. It was his first Camino. My first Camino, and then he's been back to like every year <laughs> or multiple times a year, you know. And then you know we're friends on Facebook, and um, so there's him. There's Gabriella from Italy. She's wonderful. Um, there's Sarah, also another American, um, Davide De Milo from Italy, uh, you know, and, and several others, some Canadians. Um, so yeah, the, everybody that I, I still hold on to, if you will, yeah, that's they amazing. all stick out. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. The, the, okay. There's anything on the Camino that you you would change? Um. No, no regrets. No regrets. Amazing. Just Amazing. like my life, no regrets. Amazing. So do you know? I have like, I have, and you also, but uh, I have lots of amazing stories, and uh, some of them are really special. Um, in the in two thousand and sixteen, I met this. Uh, this it was my my, my second. My second pilgrim, well, well, I, I, of course, I, I was riding a bike uh, and I stopped in a place in a small cafe, also, also on, on Portuguese, on the Portuguese Camino. And I, met, okay. my, and I met like this German old guy, or at least he seemed old, 
okay. like big beer, big uh, big air, uh, yeah, long beer, uh, just rough. I expect you know. Uh, and I was talking to them in England, and he just and he just said to me, "Do you know? Uh, I live on the Camino uh, for more or less nine months, nine years, and forty months." He lived on the Camino. Do you know? Living on the Camino. That's just okay. What I am doing here. <laughs> just, just amazing. And so he lives in the one spot in the Camino. No, he, he walks the, oh, goes back all the time. Goes back and <laughs> wow. Now, now I, I know some more. And since then, there are some that I really know on the Camino. But in that yeah. moment, it was my first pilgrim that I saw. Yeah. While while riding the bike, it's just I don't know. It was just amazing. Yeah. So um, any any future plans? Any future plans to go back? Um, if I did go back, I would probably bring a people that I care about. I would I would share it with people that I know. I think it's it's the idea of like sharing something that special with the most uh, endearing and um, most important people in your life. So I would do it that way. I wouldn't, I, I don't think, I don't, I don't feel the need to do it alone yeah. for another 33 days, you know? Uh, I think it would be more of like a, a sharing experience with people that I know. That's a really, really nice. Uh, so Alex, we're almost finishing here, but um, two last questions. First, okay. what advice can you give to a pilgrim that will start the Camino for the first time? Um, if I could give any advice, it would be to make it your own Camino. Don't focus too much on other people, on other um you know, videos about um, where to go, where to stay. You know, a lot of people have guides. Avoid, avoid this hostel or this hotel, you know, this, like, don't treat it like your, your typical tourist experience. Uh, don't look for, you know, online reviews and ratings. <laughs> um, just really go with an open mind. And, um, and, and just be open to everything that happens on the community. I went without a cell phone that was deliberate. I went, I didn't have a map. I didn't have like a guide, nothing. I literally showed up and I believed in following the yellow signs. And I remember other people were like, Alex, you don't, you don't even have a map. I was like, no, we're supposed to follow the signs, <laughs> you know, and it, it I, I made it just fine. So, um, yeah. You are the second, the second builder that told me that the same, you know? Oh, really? Yeah. That's uh, and oh, the, the other one. It's re really a special friend of mine that I met on uh, sad story that I met on the, um, on the Camino, uh, four years ago, on the Portuguese Camino. We, he, 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 I met uh, she, and he was walking with with his uh, with her uh, with his wife, uh, the first Camino, the Portuguese Camino. Uh -huh. That was in two thousand and seventeen. Okay, we chatted a lot. We made we like we were really big friends on on that Camino. But uh, six months later, um, his wife uh, had passed away. By wow. an aneurysm. He was like 29 years old. Wow. And uh, I don't know. And then two, two years later, uh, he decided to walk the Camino to honor her because the Camino um, was her idea. Oh. Uh, she, was her idea that the first time yeah. was she, he was there just to follow her. Yeah. Uh, and he, he told me, he, he had done it the Camino in 2019, that's even harder, uh, walked the Camino without, without a phone. That for me was just amazing. Yeah. Um, so, um, last question, Alex. Um, 
looking back, um, what is the, 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 how the Camino was so important for you in your life? How? It, yeah, how? how? Um, you know, a lot of, some people view the Camino as, uh, I don't know, this catalyst for change, you know, or this inflection point in their lives where, you know, they, they change some type of uh, behavior pattern or uh, their priorities. Uh, for me, you know, it's, I would say this, it, the Camino wasn't life changing as much as it was life affirming. It just affirmed, you know, what life is about, you know, how, how I can take the greatest pleasure in the most simple things, what, what truly matters in our walk in this life, you know, because the Camino is such a perfect allegory for life, you know, and you're just walking every day and you meet these, these incredible people from all over and you have these different experiences. Some are long lasting, others aren't. But at the end of the day, we're all walking towards the same destination. And what is that destination in life? It's death. Yeah. We're all gonna die. It doesn't matter, you know, our, our socioeconomic level, you know, how, mu how much stuff we have on our bags, carrying our bags. Like at the end of the day, like the idea is we're all gonna make it to the end. And um, so uh, I, don't, I don't know why I brought that. <laughs> it, it, it may come across as, as you know, uh, a bit morbid, but it, it just, it should make us more appreciative of the simple everyday experiences that we have in our lives. Um, so like I said, that's why I say it's, it's life affirming. It just made me more appreciative of the moments. Just like I, I mentioned that 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 moment when I had in Finistere, you know, having that lunch, and I feel like I could just prolong it forever. Something so simple. Yeah. Uh, so that's life affirming. So I wouldn't say better. I wouldn't say better. Uh, so Alex, we're already finishing here, but thank okay. you so much for for sharing thank your story you. with me. It was really a pleasure. Uh, I oh, yeah. enjoyed a lot. Thank you so much for the the pleasure was all mine, and I I salute your effort in you know keeping the Camino alive and sharing it with as many people as humanly possible. I think it's it's a very admirable feat for you. So thank you for for sharing. Thank you.